Welcome to the Purple Lit Nerd Podcast for July the 8th, 2018. I am your host, the amazingly adorable Rebecca Thistle, podcasting to you live-ish from my new used desk in my apartment, which I call Jeffrey Thistle Work. Yes! So, as always, spoiler alert, if you have not read the Iron Nerd Chronicles, all, all nine books at the very least, <laughs> and you care about spoilers, stop listening. Stop listening, go out and read the books. Um, today we're covering the final novel, which is Scourged. So, now before I, I really get into it, um, I kind of want to preface this by saying Scourged is less about the story and more about the moral of the story. <laughs> So this is going to be kind of a weird podcast. Not that it's ever normal to begin with, but let's go. So, as in Shattered and Staked, we have three different points of view, three different narrative points of view from Atticus, Granuel, and Owen. However, unlike Shattered and Staked, it's really hard to sort of compartmentalize it into three different separate adventures and uh, and then one big epic battle at the end. Um, So, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to put this all together. Also, between Staked and Scourged, there was, well actually there were were two novellas, uh, that were Oberon's meaty mysteries, And then a collection of short stories called Besieged that have some minor but fairly crucial tidbits of information that have an impact. So I'll I'll mention them as we go. Oh, Lord. How do I start? Okay. Let me start with Granuel's story. So, in Besieged, uh, one of the short stories narrated by Granuel um, starts with her working in a bar in Poland. Um, If you'll recall from Staked, uh, the end of Staked, she decided that she's going to learn Polish for her next headspace. So, in order to achieve this, she has decided to work at a bar in Poland and uh, immerse herself in the language. So, in in Besieged, there's a short story where a vampire walks into her bar, and it's not a joke. He walks into her bar, bearing a note, saying, Yeah, you know how all the vampires are supposed to evacuate Poland? We're not fucking doing it. Signed by this guy, Kotswago, or something. I forget the name. I'm so bad with some of these character names, and I apologize. So, Granuel unbinds the vampire who delivers the note on site, contacts Leif Helgerson. They track down a den of vampires in this uh, neighborhood. And with the help of some skinhead-esque mercenaries, uh, hunt them down and kill a bunch of them. So... But they know that that's, that, that that's not the end, because Katzwogo is still there, and surely he's got some other people, and plus thralls, and food, and whatever else going on. So, Scourge starts with Granuels in her bar, and in walks Flittish, the Irish goddess of the hunt. Flittish is in a mood, because... Again, in Besieged, there is a story 
where she pulls some Irish trickery and pisses off Perun, and Perun breaks up with her. Not in so many words, but there you go. So she's in a mood. She's not happy. She is heartbroken, and she knows it's her fault that he left, and she feels really bad. And uh, so she goes into Granuel's bar, gets shit-faced, starts a fracas, Granuel quits her job, and ushers Flittish out before anybody can get majorly hurt. And after Flittish sobers herself up using Gaia's magic, um tells her about the raid on this uh, home with vampires in it. And Flitter says, oh, take me there. I need a good hunt. So they go back to the bunker or whatever. And Flitter sniffs around and does her thing and eventually communicates to Granuel that there are still vampires living there. There's a hidden compartment or chamber or whatever. Um, where there are still vampires hanging out. So, uh, the two of them, after Granuel borrows two of the three magical stakes from Owen without permission, um, the two of them go back into this bunker and destroy all the vampires, long story short. It's pretty epic, actually. Um... After which, Flittish says, Yeah, uh, by the way, Briad wants me to tell you that Ragnarok's about to start, but that you can be more beneficial to the cause by fighting off some demons that are going to come out of a mountain in Taiwan, specifically outside of Tao, Tao, Taipei. And you're going to achieve this with the help of Sun Wukong, the Monkey King. And Granuel says, cool! So they shift over to Taiwan and they go into this bubble tea shop, which is what Sun Wukong does. Mostly for fun, to be honest with you. Less for a living, but for fun. Um, and so Sun Wukong, um, after being given code words and serving them up some bubble tea, um, takes Granuel and starts training her and some techniques that she doesn't know. Meanwhile, Flitter says, all right, you're good here. I got to go do some stuff in Japan. And so they're like, okay. So Granuel starts training up with Sun Wukong and, um, and then once she's ready, they go to this mountain and start fighting these demons. Now, um, Granuel's story is less about her adventures, learning these techniques, and fighting these demons and these Yama kings, and more about her pondering judgment and consequences, and more importantly, why the hell she's there in the first place. And eventually she figures out that she's not there because she's actually needed, because Sun Wukong and the other, you know, Chinese Buddhist deities have that shit well under control and under lockdown. <clears throat> she's there mostly to be kept away from Ragnarok that is taking place in Sweden. And she is understandably pissed. Um, especially even more pissed when she finds out that she was actually sent there not at the behest of Briad, but at the behest of Atticus, who sparked a deal with Briad, apparently. So, pause the story there. Um, Owen Kennedy, his role in the book is primarily to put out fires. He's he's basically on call for Gaia throughout the book. So, um, in Besieged, he, um, he is summoned to Tasmania, alongside Atticus, actually, 
because the Tasmanian devils are getting sick and they're spreading it around to each other and it's rapidly killing the devil population. And so uh, he has been summoned by the Tasmanian elemental to heal these little creatures. And so he, he goes with his six apprentices to Tasmania and they are they are taught how to heal these animals firsthand with the help of little um, spheres of the elemental. It's hard to explain. I'll probably explain it in a later show. Um, but that's what they're doing at the beginning of the novel. So while they're doing this, uh, Briad finds him in Tasmania and says, hey, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to persuade Fand and Monanen McLear to come fight in Ragnarok on the side of the Tuatha Dé Danann. And Owen goes, really, me? <laughs> I'm the kind of person that creates rifts, not really mends them. But she says, no, you've got to do it. Atticus, or Shiahan, is off doing some other shit. So Owen goes, okay. So he goes to the Morrigan's Fen, where they've been hiding out, if you'll recall, from the end of Staked. He finds out that Fand has broken free of uh, her prison and is hanging out in the Morrigan's property on whatever plane in the Irish pantheon. So he goes there, and he sits down, and he talks to them, and sort of air, uh, airs out, or lays out Briad's offer, and Fand says, well, that's not cool. Because she sits on this iron throne that is just a constant thorn in the side of all the fae. She says she's first among the fae, but most of her subjects are very susceptible to iron. One touch of iron and poof, they turn into ashes. So if she gets rid of that throne, I'll join up. I'll fight back and, you know, and, and, and I'll come back to Tirnanog and we'll work on healing our remaining differences. So Owen takes this back to Briad. Briad says, okay, whatever. Because apparently she had expected it and knew that it was something she was going to do. So she, right then and there, destroys her Iron Throne in front of the Fey Host. And, um... Owen goes back to Earth and puts himself on call for Gaia. And so his chapters are mostly him putting out fires around the world. So first he gets sent off to the Bavarian Alps where some cobalts are causing some problems. And now cobalts are these rock creatures. They kind of look like, like, um, what's that comic book character? The thing? Yeah, that's kind of how they look. And they, like, throw lava and shit. Oh, they're awful. But Owen defeats five of these fuckers over in Bavaria. And he's never been there in his lifetime. So he's kind of getting to see the world for the first time and just how big it is. Um, after that, he is summoned over to, uh, Montana in the Rocky Mountains because there are some there is a portal that has been opened and that's portals are always a drain on the earth and so he's sent to investigate upon arriving there he realizes it's a bunch of frost giants from Jotunheim trying to escape the chaos of impending Ragnarok and they're setting up camp in this very cold and icy area of the country and so he says, hey, everything's fine. They're just setting up camp. And hey, they might they might even do some good around here. So let's, let's just leave them be. The portal's closed. It's good. Elemental says, okay, fine. Then he's summoned to the Amazon where this nature goddess is going batshit crazy because she believes that the humans are trying to kill her ecosystem. Which in many ways they are, but the specific thing that triggers her actually wasn't caused by humans. I'll get to that here in a few minutes and so Owen calms this nature goddess down in the process